2011 Toyota RAV4 13199 on the odometer. The car's running fine, but the check engine light is on. So is low tire pressure, but that's one of the sensors in the wheel. So let me put the scanner on it and see what we got. I do have one trouble code. P0137 O2 sensor, low voltage bank one sensor two. It actually says this is one of three. So this is a current code. Another P0137, a pending code, same thing and permanent p0137 o2 sensor circuit low voltage bank one sensor two sensor two i believe is downstream of the catalytic converter so we'll check it out and probably replace it now my rev4 has a four cylinder 2ar fe engine and if you don't know what engine you have you should have a sticker like this on the underside of your hood right there in the middle 2ar fe and on this engine there are two oxygen sensors you have a bank one sensor one which is accessible from the top side of the engine and it is right there in between the exhaust manifold and the catalytic converter which is right down there with the two bolts on it so that is bank one sensor one bank one sensor two is on the back side or downstream of the catalytic converter and that's the one i need to replace and i'm going to have to go underneath the car to get to it And now underneath the car to give you an idea of where that sensor is located, the bank one sensor two, that is the passenger side front tire. So if you go under, just like you're trying to get to your oil drain pan, which is right there, there's the drain bolt. And mine is leaking a little bit. Just beyond that, that is the bank one sensor two oxygen sensor. And that is your access hole. You somehow have to go through there to get that sensor off. So let me figure out if I have the right wrenches to do that and I'll be back. So here is the plan. The nut on that O2 sensor is 22 millimeter. So I do have an open end wrench and a box end at the other end that will reach up in this small spot. And there is a wrench made specifically for O2 sensors that has a slit cut up the side so you can slide it over the wires and fit it onto the sensor. But then I don't see anywhere that the ratchet handle, you don't have any room to turn it. So this is the one little channel that you have to work with. So I'm gonna try to do it with an open end wrench. What I'm gonna do, if you see beyond it, that gray wiring harness, that has to be disconnected. That leads to the oxygen sensor. So I'm gonna disconnect that harness. I'm gonna slide that harness or that little gray connector. I'm gonna slide it through the box end of the wrench and then slide the wrench down and try to break it loose that way. But before I do that, I'm gonna heat this up with a propane torch in order to hopefully expand the metal a little bit and make it easier to break it free. Now on that wiring harness, it looks like right there on top, that looks like the locking tab. So I'm gonna be pressing down on that and trying to pull the other side out. I'm not gonna be able to film that because I'm holding the camera right now with one hand, but that's what I'm pressing down on, trying to pull it apart. I'll be back if I get that done. That was it. You press down on that tab and then pull the other half out. It's going to be difficult if it was like mine because it was stuck in there pretty well, but got it loose. Next, let me heat it up with a propane torch. And the cheater bar. Baby. Oh. Hey, there we go. Oh man, did you miss that? Or did you see it? It broke loose. Woohoo! I let it cool off for about 10 minutes. I didn't want to touch that sensor with it being so hot. And I know I explained this earlier, but there's the passenger side front tire. With the wrench hanging down, you can really see where that sensor is located. So you come in, there's your oil drain pan, and straight up through that channel, there is the O2 sensor, bank one, sensor two. Let me see if I can turn up my hand. New sensor is a Bosch sensor, part number 13355. And before I try to put that new one in, I want to make sure that the wiring harnesses line up. Same locking tab, 
same pin configurations, four pins, and the new one on the threads already has anti-seize. So let's get this new one installed. This is actually my third attempt to get this started back in to get the threads started, and this is proving to be more difficult than taking it out, actually. Because when you spin the sensor, the wiring harness spins also, and it gets hung up on everything and doesn't want to twist. I think I got it this time. Yeah, it started. It's in. All right, that's hand tight. So now let me feed this back through and slide the wrench over it again. That's it. All I gotta do is plug the wiring harness in. And we're done. All right, short test drive, went to get some gas. I've driven a little over a mile. Check engine light went out on its own. I did not have to clear it. Engine is running fine. So if you have a four cylinder 2AR FE engine in your Toyota, whether or not it's a RAV4, this may apply to you. Where I showed you the sensors are in this car might be where your sensors are as well. And the one underneath, the difficult one, that's how you can get to it, what you saw in this video. Down below in the description, I'll put a link to the Bosch sensor that I use. Again, it was a 133.55. I paid $104 for this at AutoZone. The reason I went with that is they're three quarters of a mile away and they had this in stock. The same thing you can get off of Amazon for 50 bucks for a half price. But sometimes you pay for the convenience of knowing that within a year, if this goes bad, I drive three quarters of a mile and I get a new one. If I buy it off Amazon, I've got to return it and I have to wait for them to mail me one back. So for the convenience, pay more money. Sometimes it's worth it. In this case, it was for me. Upstream, the one that you get to from the engine compartment, like I showed you, that is sensor one. I do not know if this will fit sensor one on a 2AR FE engine. Again, in this case, 2011 Toyota RAV4 four cylinder. This was bank one sensor two, perfect fit. Look for the links below. And now last thing, I'm gonna show you what I used for a cheater bar. I used a short section of three quarter inch pipe and I hooked it onto the open end into the wrench. To break it loose, I hooked it on this side, then I switched over here when I was tightening. So you're gonna need more leverage more than likely. You may be able to get it just with a wrench, but having that cheater bar gives you more torque and more leverage. And if you have a wrench like this, I would strongly suggest that you use the box end as opposed to the open end. You're much less likely to strip it out using the box end plus Having that open end gives you some place that you can hook the cheater bar onto. And if you don't have heat, if you don't have a torch like what I use, you can use WD-40, you can use PB Blaster, a liquid wrench, some type of penetrating oil to spray at the base of the sensor, let it soak in for a while, and that should help it break loose also. But this combination is what worked for me. Hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.